I think it's fair to say that Neymar was by far the most promising and exciting wonder kid since the beginning of the new millennium. Football fans all around the world would watch late night Santos matches just to see the future best player in the world. You'll be even better than Messi. You will be the one to guide Brazil back to World Cup glory. The promise was immense, but 13 years later after his rise, we've witnessed a final nail in the coffin of a career who has massively underdelivered with Neymar leaving Europe to play in Saudi Arabia. But why? With so much undeniable skill, why did Neymar ultimately fail to achieve his biggest goals? It's a perplexing scenario, but I promise that by the end of this video, you'll understand the real shocking reasons behind his downfall and I'm sure you'll at least be able to empathize with him. The first big reason behind his struggles is quite connected to what kickstarted his early success, his dad, Neymar Sr. We all know that Neymar's family life is quite rocky, but his dad might just be the biggest troublemaker. Now, Neymar Sr. himself had a go at football when he was younger, but he retired at 32 with basically nothing in his pockets. He never really got the recognition or rewards he might have hoped for, so when people started noticing his son's immense talent, he saw it as a way to live out his unfulfilled dreams. Plus, growing up in pretty dire poverty shaped him into someone who values money above everything, even more than success in the game. This mindset has led him to conflicts with agents and club directors, earning him a reputation of a traitor and someone who can't keep his word. That being said, let's give credit where it's due. Neymar Sr. has always been there to shield his son. Maybe just a bit too much, though. He's been a gatekeeper for Neymar's relationships as pretty much everyone who enters his life has to pass the dad's approval. All of this has definitely hindered Neymar's career path. He's been primed to chase money and be a bit on the greedy side, sometimes when it's not even the smartest move. Which leads us to the most tragic moment in his career and the second reason behind his downfall, his move to PSG. Back in 2017, Neymar was part of arguably the most lethal trio of all time, the MSN. It was an unstoppable force that no one was able to effectively stop. And although the previous season had been a failure by Barca's standards, they were still in contention to win a travel, if they kept their biggest stars. But here came PSG, who had already cemented their status as an elite club, but now needed a fresh new star to guide them to a first Champions League win. So they approached Neymar and his father with a clear strategy. First, they promised the father that his son would sign a contract that would guarantee wealth for generations to come, while at the same time, they played with Neymar's ego, convincing him that he would never be able to shine under Messi's shadow and the only way he would ever win the Ballon d'Or was if he guided PSG to Champions League glory. After a long period of negotiations and lots of false love promises, Neymar finally joined PSG, but the following six years were filled with disappointing and painful moments. Neymar suffered injuries after injuries and his performances at the Parc des Princes never matched the brilliance that he showed in Barcelona. It's ironic that he moved there to be the best player in the world and to become a man, not so reliant on what others expected of him. But instead, he lost his fire and began doing whatever he felt like, even when it didn't benefit him. However, I don't believe Neymar simply gave up on his career or dreams. He tried to force a move away from the French capital several times, but the reason why he never actually left, even when clubs still saw him as a great asset, was also one of the biggest reasons behind his downfall, which is his entourage of yes men. In case you didn't know, Neymar has lived with a large group of friends for a couple of years now. Those friends receive about $11,000 a month and their main job is to relieve Neymar's stress. They're here to make him laugh, to make him feel good about himself, but ultimately they've been called a bad influence by several people who have also worked with Neymar. They're the main reason behind all the partying that you see Neymar partaking in, with extravagances like 12 bottles of champagne and a funk version of the Brazilian national anthem playing in the background being nothing out of the ordinary for the close group of friends. When Neymar has a terrible idea, they don't criticize him or try to dissuade him, they just go with whatever the Brazilian wants to do, simply to keep their place in the sun. That creates a bubble for Neymar, with the Brazilian never having to face real constructive criticism and becoming progressively more full of himself. I mean, how would you feel if everything you did, right or wrong, was celebrated? You would start thinking you're above everything, absolutely untouchable, even by the club that pays your salary. And that leads me to the fourth reason behind his downfall, his massive ego. Cristiano and Messi left Europe because they're old. There's no other way to put it. We all age, and as much as we find it funny to say that they're out of this world, they abide by the same rules of time as we all do. Neymar, on the other hand, is only 31. There are so many decent players, not even world class, that receive chances by top European clubs at that age. 
The only reason Neymar doesn't get the same treatment isn't because of his injuries, but instead because of his ego. How can a player who gets injured almost every year at the most fulcral part of the season expect a top club to want him? How can a player who despite never leading a team to success by himself, still expect to be treated as a leader of a squad? Signing Neymar would be similar to signing Ronaldo. The team he would join would have to change their formation in order to take advantage of the Brazilian forward. In a way, they would play for him. But the difference between him and Ronaldo is that Ronaldo led a charge and delivered results at the highest level during his entire career. Neymar, on the other hand, not so much. So it's understandable that several Premier League teams once begged for his services now see him as damaged goods. And that his former mate Xavi, despite having so many positive things to say about him, still feared that he could destabilize the entire locker room. He's rich, he's almost guaranteed to become a billionaire in a couple of years, but he couldn't even compromise to a lower salary and that shows to every club that he didn't change. If they bought him, they couldn't expect anything more than what we've witnessed in France for the last couple of seasons. A brilliant player who on his best day can win a game by himself, but due to his bad habits can never match the same level for long. But although his personality contributed to the early end of his career at the highest level, it also made an entire generation of kids adore him. His flair, skill and confidence gave hope to a country eager to find their next talisman. But in the end, the biggest reason why Neymar failed to become the best player in the world is none other than his country, Brazil. For some unknown reason, Brazilians are extremely talented when it comes to football, so naturally that topic is going to be perhaps the most important thing in the country. As a consequence of their past success, the Brazilian people always expect to win the World Cup, and if they don't, who do you think they're going to blame? Their biggest star. Neymar got away with a 2014 fiasco mainly because he was out with an injury when Brazil was barred 7-1 by Germany. But in the following quarterfinal failures in 2018 and 2022, the majority of Brazilians put the blame entirely on Neymar. How do you think that feels? To be the one carrying your nation and still being viewed as a main culprit of their failures? I can blame Neymar for his failures at club level, but not on the international stage. Similarly to Cristiano, he wasn't blessed with a generation of incredible talents and on the contrary of Messi, never had teammates who stuck with him through thick and thin. It was his biggest dream to win the World Cup with Brazil. Failing at doing so is already devastating, but being slandered for his failure is unbearable. Besides, the Brazilian media feasts on him like some rabid mosquitoes, always looking for the next controversy to turn into a headline. They stalk him and everyone around him. I mean, his life is the Brazilian's favorite soap opera. In his 13 years in the limelight, the amount of stories on the Brazilian player is absolutely ridiculous and any rational person can easily tell that most of them are exaggerated in order to make him look bad. That has undeniably taken a toll on his mental health, with Neymar himself claiming that he could leave the national team simply because he doesn't have enough mental strength to continue enduring the hate spewed in his erection. At this point, I don't think that we'll see Neymar playing in a World Cup ever again. In fact, with him playing out of Europe, it's even unlikely that we'll ever see him win the Copa America. And from someone who watched him rise up in Santos as the most promising and talented wonder kid that I've ever seen, it saddens me to see his career ending this way. After so much promise and so many failed attempts at being his best self once again, Neymar will forever have to carry the burden of being a boy who never matured into a man. A boy who dreamed, but never made enough sacrifices to reach the promised land. A prince who never became king. But what about you? Do you consider Neymar's career a failure? Leave your opinion in the comments and let's have a discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to Throne FC so you never miss the most interesting football discussions, stories and news. Like the video if you want to see more controversial debates. And as always, thank you for watching until the end. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.